It's a new day, which means it's time for another conversation about the Asperi Kotkaniemi offer sheet. Now, full disclosure, yesterday's video where we spoke about the entire redraft that Wheeler did on The Athletic with Quinn Hughes as the first overall pick in 2018, Darlene third overall, and KK down there at 10th to Edmonton, that video was recorded like a week ago before the entire offer sheet even happened, so I think... This is just my guess, but I think some of you already figured that out in the comments, so good on you for kind of figuring that out, so. But either way, we have ourselves another discussion here about Kakanyemi, and this time, it's not really brought upon by anybody in the media sphere, I guess? Nobody is externally bringing up what I believe is to being big meat on the bone, aside from, of course, a few perspectives that highlight these things a little bit later, but... We're speaking today, in particular, about Nick Suzuki. Yeah, that's right. You talk about KK being a young, up-and-coming boating center on this team. Nick Suzuki is technically that, too. And you could say that he's kind of, uh, what's the word? Better? Either way, though, Nick Suzuki was indeed a center drafted by the Golden Knights. We all kind of know the story here. Max Pacioretty, trade Montreal, makes his debut, whatever, whatever. The thing about Nick Suzuki in this conversation is that he is what many people would consider towards being the best center on the team, as well as the number one center to be. When everybody was talking about the future projections, it was always Suzuki, KK, and then Evans or Paling, whichever one you wanted to put there, when projecting the Habs lineup, let's say, four, five, six years from now. And so, with this Kotkaniemi offer sheet, we've kind of had a monkey wrench thrown into the entire plan here, because KK making 6.1 next season would be an overpayment, and there is no guarantee that he would be that kind of player heading into the long-term future, especially when his qualifying offer would start at that $6.1 million mark as well. For Nick Suzuki, on the other hand, he's making $900,000 next season, and he will need a contract extension starting for the 2022-2023 season, meaning that the conversation's going about with him and whether or not he would be an offer she kind of guy is concerning at the very least too. But Nick Suzuki made himself an appearance on the Habs Tonight podcast. It's a show run by Dale Weiss, who a lot of people kind of remember as being a legendary Hab in his own right. And they had Suzuki on, and he spoke a little bit about the Kotkaniemi offer sheet in general. I just wanted to read some of these quotes over here because... Just getting Nick Suzuki's perspective on the entire matter kind of sheds a little bit of light to, I guess I would say, the locker room, you know? Because a lot of people looking at KK and seeing the offer sheet he signed, there's been an unwarranted amount of hate for KK going his way, at least based off of what I've seen on social media and what fans are saying. Because, let's face it, the offer sheet with Carolina is only an offer sheet because Kotkaniemi signed it. It's not because Carolina had to force their hand and they inserted themselves into the conversation and Kotkaniemi unwillingly is part of this process. Nope, he had to sign the offer sheet himself. That's why it's actually a big deal. And so, for people to go out there and think to themselves, oh man, KK, he did this, he's screwing over the Habs, why would he do this, man? When he comes back to Montreal and he plays for the Canadians in front of their hometown fans, imagine the boos that this guy's going to receive because he put the Canadians in that position. Is he going to be even welcome back into the locker room? Is the team going to be okay with him being there, knowing what he did to screw over the Habs and all this stuff? A lot of people are kind of all over the place with their judgment, but I think Nick Suzuki comments on the podcast over here do indeed shed some light as to what the player's perspective on this whole matter is and just whether or not there's even any truth to that idea that KK wouldn't be welcome into the locker room because of what he did. This is what Suzuki said on the offer sheet on the Habs Tonight podcast. Offer sheets are part of the business. Every RFA is up for grabs in that way. Well, technically, Suzuki, I'll just stop you right there. Not every RFA is in that position. Quinn Hughes, for example, not eligible to be offer sheeted. However, I get your point, so let's go ahead and continue. It's a great deal for Kotkaniemi and his family. It's a lot of money. He then follows this up by saying, Hopefully the Habs can work out a way, because I know the players. We don't want to lose KK, and I'm sure management doesn't either. So hopefully they find a way to get him back on the team. And this is the kind of thing that I don't know if fans really realize about hockey and team sports and the camaraderie that exists within that locker room, etc. That, sure, 
Kotkaniemi, what he did was an objectively bad thing for the Canadians because it puts them in a position where they either get rid of their third overall pick from 2018, or they overpay for their third overall pick in 2018. They get it. It's not an objectively good thing that KK signed the offer sheet. But as I've been saying the entire time here, KK has no reason to refuse this entire thing because... I mean, if he was negotiated with Montreal, they were going to offer him what, according to Renault Lavoie? Two million? Two point two million? If Carolina comes knocking on your door and they say, hey, here's six million dollars. Yes, we don't like your team. Yes, we're upset at them. Yes, this is an emotionally fueled decision over here. But hey, we'll offer you six million bucks, which is three times the amount you're worth to be a part of this process where we can potentially screw over your hockey team. Sure, you might not want to do that, but... Six million dollars up front, man, and a six million dollar qualifying offer for next year. You want to take it? Suzuki's speaking from the point of perspective because he's like, yeah, it's a lot of money for him and his family. There's no way he would say no to that because, I mean, look, the agent knows what he's worth. He knows what he's worth, most likely. He knows what the contract negotiations were like, most likely. If the Habs were offering him anything close to $6 million in any part of the negotiation process, he would have no reason to accept this Carolina offer sheet. And he seemed to do it so diligently as well. As we noted from Pierre Lebrun, it appeared that the Carolina Hurricanes were trying to trade for KK before sending him the offer sheet, to which he very graciously accepted, because it's $6 million. And anybody who is in that locker room with him, who knows this guy, who understands the situation as to how the business side of hockey works, they're not going to look at this and say, KK, man, why do you have to do that? You suck, buddy. Why you take more money on the offer sheet? They're going to look at that and say, oh my goodness, KK, you got paid. That's great, buddy. And then they'll slap him on the back and maybe give him a noogie or something because they're older. I don't know. This is what it's like being a part of that kind of environment. The boys are your boys until one of you gets traded, one of you leaves, or when somebody gets, I don't know, removed from the team or whatever. So for Nick Suzuki to be like, yeah, it's good for him. My goodness, what a great amount of money that he's getting. It kind of sheds some good perspective on this. This entire situation here, this KK offer sheet, sure, you could say that there's going to be a loser at the end of the day. Whoever has to take on the KK contract, whether that is Montreal or that is Carolina, it's going to be quite a mess. But one thing is for sure that the winner of this situation is 110% KK himself. And to anybody who was going out there talking about Nick Suzuki and saying, oh, I'm scared, man. What about the offer sheet for him? He's got an offer sheet coming out to next year. Well, let's go over to what Grant McHagg said about Nick Suzuki and the entire thing here, because yeah, he is an RFA. He will expire next season, and he does have that offer sheet eligibility, I believe. Nick Suzuki will be signing a long-term contract for more than $6 million AAV, whether KK is on the team or not. P.S. He will be, McCag says. He's very adamant, by the way, that the Canadians will indeed match the offer sheet, but carrying on. I don't agree with the notion that the offer sheet affects Suzuki's next contract. It wasn't Bergevin's idea to pay KK $6 million this season. Nick's agent isn't going to walk into Bergevin's office next summer if Suzuki has 30 more points in KK and demands that he gets 9 million because KK has to be paid 6. It'll be because Suzuki just scored 80 points. If he scores 70, he'll get 8 million. 60, he'll get 7 million. 50, he'll get 6 million. Suzuki as an RFA will not be in a position of demanding anything as selfish as asking to be overpaid simply because Bergevin was forced to pay KK 6.1 this season. And if, in his second-line role, KK blossoms as I think he will, it will all be moot anyway. So, there you have it, I guess. For Nick Suzuki, this contract with KK should not have any bearings on the Suzuki negotiations next season, if what McCagg is saying is somewhat akin to what the NHL GMs would be thinking, because it's not Bergevin himself who decided to give KK 6. It's somewhat similar to the Shea Weber thing with Nashville, because Shea Weber's massive contract, you gotta remember, wasn't even signed by Nashville at the beginning, it was an offer sheet by Philadelphia that Nashville actually matched. So now you have the situation where Shea Weber, if he retires, the Nashville Predators will get a really big cap hit penalty, but some would argue that it's unfair because Nashville isn't the ones who gave him the contract in the first place. It was actually Philadelphia, whereas the Predators just matched it. So 
There is the perspective here on KK, what Suzuki said about his teammate getting an offer sheet over here. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think about Suzuki's comments on the entire overall situation? Do you think this sheds some light on how fans should be treating KK compared to how his teammates are? Talk to me in the comments. What do you think of being enjoyed? This is Vitaly Ashrolls 99. And bye.